Hi there. So in this module, we'll study a very interesting phenomena, a phenomena that relates almost everything we can see. Light. And so first questions first, okay? What is light? Now if you look into our NCRD textbooks, it says that light is a form of energy which gives us a sensation of visions. And it's pretty clear, right? Because if I turn on the lights, you, you can't really see me, can you? So let me just turn this back on. Okay, it's now pretty invisible to you. So it clearly gives us a, a, a sensation of vision. Now, what I, when I ask you this question, I don't really mean the energy form. I mean what light is composed of, what makes light light. Okay, now it turns out this question has a really long history since the time of Newton. So I need, I need you to sit back and enjoy the story. Okay, so the Newton, he believed that you know, light, uh, light source emits tiny particles called corpuscles, which give light. Okay, so light is essentially corpuscles moving, and he explained phenomena such as reflection and refraction as interactions of these corpuscles. Like ref uh, reflection being the uh, corpuscles are hitting each other, and refraction being the corpuscles are attracted to a, uh, any a medium, and we'll see what they are in in great detail. So that's what Newton believed. Now there's there was another guy, Robert Huygen, Christ, Christian Huygen. He was a contemporary of Newton, and he believed that light may not be something related to corpuscles. It might be related to something waves, like waves, light propagating as waves. And we do not see the wave nature of light because you know the objects which we deal with are really big. If when we compare it to the wavelength of light, the waves have a wavelength. So, but this idea was, you know, was remained dumb like, for many years, and then came a guy called Thomas Young, and he did something called Tom Thomas Young's double slit ex double slit experiment. So, let us see what Young's double slit experiment is. So, here's what Young's double slit experiment looks like. Okay, so you have a source that is called S, and it emits light. Okay, and so. It's better that they're nearly parallel. You can, you know, have a lens there to make it parallel. And then you have this plate, say. But, but the important thing is you make two slits. Okay. So green ones are the slits. And so light will pass two slits. And what I want you to do is, using your intuition about light, how it behaves, how it interacts with you, and you know, objects around you, what, which, what will form on this screen? If light is you know coming and it's interacting with these slits what uh, what formation do we get on the screen now I want you to write I'm not going to show you I'm, it's a suspense you can say now what I want you to do is just use your intuition about light write the answer in the comment section what do you think what will happen and then look up for this young double slit experiment and see what do we get? What did he, Thomas Young? What did he get? And one interesting thing about this that uh, you can't really explain this result using uh, the phenomena, the particle phenomena. Let us get back to our story. Okay, so this is going to really explain Young's double slit experiment based on the ray model of light. So, what was light? So the question still remains. Now it turns out the light, you know, the scientists like you know Jean French Fresnel and Maxwell, they developed a wave model of light. Light is basically a wave. A wave of what? You can may ask. A wave of electricity and magnetism. That the thing is uh, slightly complicated. So we'll just uh, save electromagnetic waves for later. Now, the thing is that okay the wave model was accepted and you know the wave model was quite prominent at that time in 1900s two people Hallwatch and Leonard made an observation the observation was that if light falls on a metal surface then electrons are ejected okay so light falls electrons get ejected and the, the important part is it does not it is not really depend on how intense your light is it depends on the frequency 
of which uh, light which you are emitting so say for example you like a lot of uh, intense uh, really intense light but of the wrong frequency of the for this particular metal you don't get any uh, electrons moving but if you even emit a small amount of frequency but the correct frequency for a given metal then electrons start behaving they have some gain some kinetic energy now this effect this observation rather is known as the photoelectric effect and this was explained by any guesses okay albert einstein and this uh, photoelectric effect was again explained using the particle model of light so you have metal surface there's stream of particles of like particles called photons of light and then they hit the metal surface and the electrons get ejected now the question remain that okay what is a wave and what's a particle the thing is that you cannot really say what is a light is a wave or a particle is a definite answer it depends on the experiment which we are considering for say some example you explain some daily phenomena like formation of shadows and you know how lenses and mirrors uh, use images then it's a useful model that you know light travels as straight lines because you can neglect the wave effect right and but when you talk about experiments like uh, young's double slit experiment you have the fresnel biprism experiment you have fraunhofer diffraction experiments you know using circular uh, circular aperture then you need the wave model of light and when it comes to effects like photoelectric effect you need the particle model of light so it's not about how many times it's not about how you visualize the model it's about the usefulness of your model okay how useful your model is how can it make predictions about the world so this is it for the today's video that was a story of light you can say on the next video i will explain you a phenomena so thanks for watching and i hope you find it really really interesting